Well, I'm so glad um, you made the effort to come tonight. Um, and, you know, I appreciate, like I said, it's July. A lot of people are wearing holidays and uh, traveling, and uh, that's understandable. Um, before I go any further tonight, I'd like, if you're a pastor or a minister or a priest or an imam, could you stand to your feet? I just want to welcome you tonight. Come on. We appreciate you. We thank you. You know, there's many others watching, and you need to grow up here. This is not a time for cowardice. This is a time to stand and be counted. If you're a leader, then lead. Hi, everybody. My name is Pastor John. <laughs> Smile. Tonight, I hope you've received a deeper understanding of the very important issues that will affect our kids. And I think, you know, the, the large turnout tonight is an indication of the depth of feeling that exists on this issue. You know, there are people here from all around the city and all around the nation even from Northern Ireland, and to all of you who came tonight, thank you. Yeah. You know, there's Catholic, Protestant, Evangelical, and there's Muslims here as well, and I want to say thank you for coming. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome here. And so you've had a barrister's perspective, a politician's perspective, and a journalist's perspective. I want to give you a pastor's perspective and a father's perspective. I'm a pastor and a father. And so, trigger warning, this is going to be religious. <laughs> and again, before I start, I just want to acknowledge uh, anything I say is no reflection. Uh, don't judge the others uh, for anything that I may say. But um, I'm coming from a religious perspective and an unapologetically a religious one. It was Mother Teresa who once said, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. And one way that we love our children is by protecting them, not just from dangerous people, but from dangerous ideas. And gender ideology is one such idea. As pastors, we deal with many adults who are damaged as children. And sadly, many of them still struggle with dysfunction today as a result. It was the great African-American orator, William Douglas, who said this, or sorry, Frederick Douglas, it's easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. And so, yeah. I worked for a number of years as a mechanic. All of my family come from the motor trade, and I understand this. Prevention is better than cure. And so I'm doing this tonight because I believe prevention is important. We need to pre prevent this ideology from being foisted upon our children, and as a consequence, many of them are struggling and uh, you know, having problems as, as, as a result. Psalm 68 and verse six says, God sets the solitary in families. In the account of creation, we see God created man and placed him in a family, and family is forever. In our ministry, my wife and I have followed a very simple motto, and that is family first. Now, let me say in all humility, there's a lot of Christians, a lot of Muslims, a lot of other religions where people need to get back to that place of recognizing family first, because there's, this place could have been full tonight. Okay? I'm actually disappointed with the turnout. Because this is a serious issue. This is about our children. And I, I honestly think that apathy is, is unforgivable in light of what our children are facing. Yeah. 
family first. Because, you know, people come with all sorts of needs and requests. Some reasonable, some irrational. And while you want to help, there's a time and a place to respectfully say no. Because we all need healthy boundaries. I'm mindful of the fact as a minister that I can make time for everybody else and their uncle and neglect my own family. And with the experience of years, I'm, I'm very blessed. I've been married for 24 years. I have five children. Um, yeah. But with the experience of years, I've discovered that toxic people don't respect boundaries. And regarding these changes to the curriculum, the government have not only crossed boundaries, but they're actively subverting our rights as parents by promoting this ideology uh, in schools. You see, there have always been traditional boundaries in healthy societies. And one of them was that kids were protected from things that were deemed to be inappropriate or harmful. And, and sadly, this no longer seems to be the case. I mean, I don't understand why it's considered to be progressive to bring kids to see a man dressed in a highly sexualized manner. Um, uh, because again, uh, I think it's important to acknowledge that because it, it dressed almost to the point of parody or, or mockery of women. Uh, for him to, to, to read or, or to dance before children and, you know, for us to be having books placed in our schools and in our libraries that are so graphic, I couldn't possibly read from them from the stage here tonight. And so, yeah. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, Jesus answered and said, Because of the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept. But from the beginning of the creation, God created them male and female. Amen. For this reason, the man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together. Let not men separate. In verse 13, then they brought little children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Assuredly, I say to you, Whoever does not receive the kingdom of heaven as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. Clearly, marriage and children matter to Christ, and they should matter to us. In this pa passage, we see two important principles revealed. And that is, according to Christ, our Lord and Savior, God made them male and female. There are only two genders. Everything else is a mental illness. And while, of course, compassion and respect are important, sex is binary and cannot be changed. Irrespective of what drugs you take or, or, or what operation you happen to undergo, your chromosomes don't lie. And it's important, therefore, to state these facts before we proceed because neither biology nor theology acknowledge any other reality. And that being so, why is our government actively promoting as fact an ideology in our schools that is utterly divisive, destructive, unscientific, and unproven, as well as contrary to the most sacred beliefs of many people of faith? And, and a person may say, I don't believe in God, I don't believe in the Bible, and, and that's your choice, I, absolutely, but I do, along with billions of others, and if inclusion, respect, tolerance are, are to be more than merely empty buzzwords, our government needs to realize this too. We sent a letter last March, it's okay, I'm going to just plow ahead because I've, I've some things to say tonight, and they need to be said. And that's my job, because ultimately I'm accountable before God, irrespective of whether you acknowledge that God or not. I believe in him. We sent a letter last March to the Minister of Education and the Minister of Children, along with every member of Dáil Éireann and the Shannon, signed by 250 Irish church leaders, expressing our deep concern about these changes to the Junior Cert curriculum that, in essence, constitute nothing less than the sexualization and the politicization of our education system. And this has been happening for some time now. Who exactly gave them this right? I mean, I thank God that I went to school in simpler times. The Christian brothers taught me to read and to write and to think. Um, yeah, they were tough, but in the words of Johnny Cash, life is tough. <laughs> you know, <laughs> life is rough, so you have to be tough. That's, I think, what Johnny Cash said. But, you know, but they just taught me the basics. And instead of 
trying to indoctrinate me with, with activist material like BLM, feminism, critical race theory, and a gender ideology that is neither rooted in biology nor reality. I, I thank God I never had a teacher that felt the need to talk to me about their sex lives or anything of a sexual nature. And personally, I have a deep distrust of any adult who wants to talk to children about sex. But, but times have changed, Pastor. Well, call me old-fashioned, but I still believe that we need to protect a child's innocence and not, and not expose them. We need to protect the child's innocence and not expose them to materials that will confuse and corrupt. I mean, they even want to teach white and male privilege to kids in the Leaving Cert. So if you're white and male, tough luck. I mean, you're part of the patriarchy. You're a kid who might have never done any wrong, but you must hang your head in shame because you are beyond redemption. I mean, talk about privilege to the millions of Irish who fled this nation, utterly destitute, on ships bound for the USA, where the mortality rate was so high, they were called coffin ships, while over a million people starved on this island. And I'm not a fan of victim culture, but what I'm saying is this, it is dangerous and disingenuous to teach divisive lies and, and reject objective truth, making sweeping statements, you know, and judgments based on a person's uh, uh, race, our sex. And, uh, you know, Jesus said this, a house divided against itself will fall. And so we are st stronger when we stand together. And I, I think this is one issue. Because really what we're dealing with is cultural Marxism, and, and that's the, what Marxists do. They divide and they conquer. And I think this is one issue that, you know, Christians, Muslims, Jews, Hindus, and people of, of, of uh, no faith uh, can stand together on regarding the protection of our children. We requested a meeting with the Minister for Education and received a polite two-line response from her secretary, and it was a typical no-answer government response. None of our concerns were addressed, none of our questions were answered, the degree of arrogance was shocking. The attitude was, your ship has sailed, parents were consulted. No, we were not. I have five children, neither their schools, nor the government consulted me. Hands up, how many of you were consulted by the government about this? Exactly as I thought. Most of us didn't even hear about these changes until they were almost due to be implemented, and I believe this was deliberate. As parents, you are constitutionally recognized as the primary educator of your children. And yet we were not consulted about this. We sent, like I said, the letter to, the, to, to members of the Dáil, the Shannon. We actually sent it by accident to some MLAs in Northern Ireland. We got some interesting responses. Um, <laughs> they got maybe, some of them maybe got a little threatened. We were trying to take over. But, um, <laughs> hey, I love the people from Northern Ireland. You're beautiful people. And... Um, but one MLA responded saying, never send me a non-inclusive email like this again. And it reveals th the parallel universe that many of our legislators are living in. Because the concept of representative democracy comes to mind. I mean, why have so many of our legislators decided that they don't represent, regard, nor respect the views of people of faith, particularly when it comes to the subject of sexuality or gender? Exactly when do we lose the ability to have an opinion or express a concern? Because our letter was not inclusive, apparently, because we hadn't bought into the whole LGBTQ ideology and were daring to ask questions and express our concerns openly and without apology. And incidentally, the letter was ignored by the entire Irish media, except for Gripped. Gripped, and to be fair, the Irish Catholic covered it as well, and I, I really appreciate that. And so, like I said, uh, 
this, this, is the, this is the thing that concerns me. That letter was signed by 250 pastors representing 250 churches. That represents thousands of parents and tens of thousands of people who go to those churches. And so what I want to ask is this. Where is equity, inclusion, and respect for what Christians have believed for the last 2,000 years regarding gender, sexuality, and marriage, as well as people of other faiths, including Judaism and Islam, along with those of no faith at all? Where is the inclusion or respect for the beliefs of the new Irish? You know, we've over 70 nationalities in, in our particular church, South American, African, Indian, Eastern European, Filipino, among others, and they don't buy into this gender ideology. I can see that with absolute certainty. And, you know, the government are always talking about diversity and the new Irish. Well, the new Irish are not buying into this. And so regarding the, you know, the right to self-identify, Ireland was the fourth country in the world in 2015 to allow citizens to legally change their gender and government documents without any medical intervention or state assessment because simply believing makes it so. I'm a man, pixie dust, I'm a woman. <laughs> logic is that? <laughs> Who needs biology or objective reality anyway? By the way, there is no pelvis operation. They dig your dead bones up in a thousand years, you're either male or female, that's it. No amount of makeup or operations can change objective reality. My youngest little girl is 11. Uh, little Julianne and uh, my wife was sick at the time. We had friends from America. We took them for dinner after church and at the end of the meal She wanted to go to the bathroom. I walked her to the to the room It was just me and, and, and her and she's just a little thing. I love her dearly and uh, but I remember I stopped at the door as, as every man should of the women's toilet and, and she walked in and uh, You know, I just suddenly had that sense of how vulnerable she was because all I could do was hope there was just women in there but the reality is this, giving biological men access to women's areas, particularly areas where there's going to be young girls, is both naive and reckless. John 8, 32, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Well, this is the truth. Gender ideology is incorrect on so many levels and the government has no right to teach an unproven theory as fact to our children and this is ultimately a violation of our constitutional rights. Article 41, 1, the state acknowledges that the primary and natural educator of the child is the family and guarantees to respect the inalienable rights and duty of parents to provide according to their means for the religious and moral, intellectual, physical, and social education of their children. Two, parents shall be free to provide this education in their homes or private schools or schools recognized by the state. Article 44 and 1, the state acknowledges that the homage of public worship is due to Almighty God. It shall hold his name in reverence and shall respect and honor religion. And two, one, freedom of conscience and the free profession and practice of religion are subject to public order and morality guaranteed to every citizen. And so, again, I believe this is, it's unconstitutional what they are doing. And, and again, aside from that, there's a real danger of social contagion. The Catholic primary, Catholic primary school managers acknowledged this earlier this year in a letter to government. We know the kids are impressionable, vulnerable, and very open to suggestion. I mean, when my oldest son, Ewan, was a little boy, I told him that if you put a slice of, ha a slice of ham into the DVD player, you'll see a picture of a pig. I <laughs> Lo and behold, a few days later, I'd see some ham sticking out of our DVD player. <laughs> I was just joking, but let me say that this is a cynical ploy to expose, to expose children to information and influences that will sexualize and ultimately cause confusion. A recent report in the UK made headlines in the Times and the Daily Mail uh, claimed that one in 10 teens between the ages of 16 and 18 in Great Britain want to change their gender or have done so in the past. And apparently, a third of them are being taught in school that a woman can have a penis. Well, one in five have been told that a man can get pregnant, as you do as a man. You've got to watch yourself, you know? I mean, <laughs> may I remind you of the words of Christ in Matthew 18? For if you cause one of these little ones who trust in me to fall into sin, it would be better for you to have a large millstone put about your neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. What sorrow awaits the world because it tempts people to sin? Temptations are inevitable, but what sorrow awaits the person who does the tempting? Tempting children. Teaching about ethical porn. There is no such thing. 
On the new curriculum, biology is being replaced by gender identity. Uh, how you see and feel about yourself as male, female, both are neither. Irrespective of the sex you were assigned at birth. Sex you were assigned at birth. And Stones, instead of talking kids down from the ledge who might be confused, you will now have an education system that wants to give them a push on a pathway that will lead to irreversible physical mutilation, sterility, and a lifetime of mental and physical health issues. I mean, one TD mentioned to me a school, uh, and again, it wasn't Patter, but it was a TD talked to me about he knew of a school where a child identifies as a cat, complete with a litter box in the toilet. Sorry, that is not normal, nor is it healthy. And anyone who says otherwise shouldn't be left within an ass's roar of a child. Did you know that over 31,000 verses in the Bible, the 27th says God made them male and female. God put it on the first page for those of you who are too lazy to read it. We are different (laughs) by divine design. We're different by divine design. And so ultimately, much of this agenda is rooted in the question, hath God said? Because as people of faith, irrespective of what religion, we believe in a creator who doesn't make mistakes. You weren't somehow assigned a gender at birth. You weren't put in the wrong body uh, by mistake. Your, your sex is foreordained by God. Psalm 139, God knew you before you were born. Uh, again, Jeremiah 1, 5. So again, maybe some of you think this talk is too religious for modern progressive Ireland, but I think Ireland needs to come back to religion. Ireland needs to come back to faith. Because let me say this. Truth transcends time, culture, opinion, and the passing mores of mortal men. I mean, it was Augustine who said, truth is like, the li- is like a lion. You don't have to defend it. Let it loose. It will defend itself. And so I believe our society is built on objective, observable, and ultimately absolute truth. And we turn from these at our peril. When we can no longer define what a man is, what a woman is, when we you know, embrace these ideas and pretend that we believe it, I'm sorry, we are on a tangent towards, you know, confusion and, and, and dysfunction and destruction. And so I make no apologies as a Christian for believing what the Bible teaches regarding sexuality and gender. Yeah. I accept that people have the right to live their lives as they, as they want to, okay? Uh, but this, this, is the, this is the issue. I draw the line where they demand that we celebrate or take pride in what they do along with teaching it to our kids, particularly when the Bible calls it sin. I'm a Christian. I'm called to love and respect everybody, but loving your neighbor and endorsing their behavior are two different things. I apologize. I've gone way over time. Just give me three or four minutes and I'm finished. John 14, Jesus said this, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. My absolutes, therefore, are found in the Bible, not in the Irish Times. So sorry, not sorry. I'm not going to turn the other cheek when there are those who clearly want to indoctrinate the next generation. It's time, people, to wake up and to speak up. You know, I was in in Rome a uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I stood in the Colosseum, and it was sobering. I just felt this sobering reality that the, the political environment that prevails has a major bearing on whether you have a peaceful life or not, whether you have a religious freedom or not, whether you have freedom of speech or not. And standing right there in the Colosseum on the ground where thousands of Christians died was a cross. And it was a silent witness to those who went before us. Not not just a witness to to Christ who died for us, but the many thousands who died in the Colosseum, killed by gladiators and wild beasts of every kind. Why? They were not only converted, they were convicted. Many of them were offered an escape from such a brutal death. They could be pardoned if they just took a pinch of incense and say, Caesar is Lord. They could walk free, but they refused. They refused to make one small compromise. They refused because they were absolutely convinced that Christ is Lord. And so they died because they would not violate their conscience. (laughs) 
And, and this is why we need to appreciate people like Pater Tobin and those other independents who are willing to take a stand on this because we need men and women of conscience because, uh, you know, 2011, the, the, the ironically named Protection of Life and Pregnancy Bill, uh, which was used to, to kind of, uh, you know, pave the way for, for abortion, I think it was Enda Kenny, the leader of Fine Gael at the time, didn't give he, the members of his uh, party the right to have a conscience, to vote according to their conscience. And, and, and really, it, it was the beginning of, of this nation going down this route whereby uh, we, we were saying to our elected representatives, you can leave your conscience at the door. Now you need to do what you're told. And I, I don't believe that's healthy. And I, I really respect the, the, the stand that, that Pater took, you know, because he believed in the sanctity of life. I think you should show your appreciation for him. These people died because they wouldn't violate their conscience. And so, in the very same way, I appreciate not to the same extreme uh, at the moment, but the principle stands nonetheless. We are facing a system that demands that we subvert our faith to a progressive agenda that is being implemented to indoctrinate and confuse our kids. And let me say this, Christians and people of other faiths worldwide are facing the might of the state, and they are all facing the same question. Do I obey government or do I obey God? Do I pretend to agree with LGBT? Do, do I choose a quiet life and keep my head down but endanger my kids and my soul in the process or do I speak up while I still have time? Ecclesiastes 3.7, there's a time to be silent and a time to speak. And again, respectfully to all of the pastors, the priests and all of the religious leaders in this nation, this is a time to stand up, speak up and be counted or just step aside and let somebody else take your place. There's a time to speak, and that time has come to have a respectful talk with your boss, your principal, your teachers, and in particular, your local TD. And again, respectfully, I think that's important. So Dietrich Bonhoeffer said this, silence in the face of evil is in itself evil. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. You see, silence in the face of the indoctrination of our kids is evil. Indoctrinating kids to become sexually active by normalizing this behavior through education Promotion of pronouns that are not based on biological fact. Teaching kids about options if they happen to get pregnant. I wonder what options are really going to be offered. Exposing them to activist organizations. I wonder if I go through that, that book. I haven't looked at it, but those books for, for kids. I wonder, is there a phone number for your local church? Or your local mosque or your local, you know, whatever. I mean, no. And, and so there's this one-sided promotion of, of a worldview. And um, so again, I think this is deeply um, unhealthy. Platforming trans entertainers, normalizing transition and cross-dressing, promotion of bathroom access based on gender identity rather than biological reality. Have I missed anything? Isaiah 5 and 20, woe to those that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness. You know, one disturbing aspect of the curriculum proposed for the Leaving Cert mentioned that some young people are unable to discuss sensitive topics at home and should be facilitated in having a thoughtful, informed, and open discussion around them with their peers in a safe classroom environment. Safe is defined by who? Because this is the subversion of parents and undermining their authority. Kids are looking for identity. And unfortunately, this ide ideology has become so pervasive it can't be avoided. And the seeds of destruction are being planted in impressionable minds that may one day come to fruition. I want to ask as I finish, why are applied flags everywhere in June? Next to our nation's flag on many public buildings, streets, police cars and fire engines in pride colors. And now they want to turn pride month into pride season because a month doesn't seem to be enough. To be honest, most people are sick to the teeth of all of this. Oh, Pastor John, be careful. This is your last sermon. If it is, so be it. If it is, so be it. I don't want to demean, disrespect anybody. But let me say this. Our public buildings and our public spaces must be neutral spaces or else... Give us all equal time. Give us Black Pride Month, Asian Pride Month, White Pride Month, Heterosexual Pride Month, Muslim Pride Month, Christian Pride Month, Hindu Pride Month, Judaism Pride Month. 
Let's have true equality, or else it would be simpler to let these spaces be neutral to all, including our schools. As I finish, let me say this. You say, Pastor John, it's your fifth time finishing. I know. <laughs> we have the thing on the screen there, so uh, feel free to, to take a photo, and we're going to get into questions and answers. But the book of Exodus, Pharaoh said this to the Israelites, you can go, but you leave your children behind. We're gathered here for one reason, not just to be informed, but to send a message to the government the same way as the Israelites said to Pharaoh, hell no. We're not leaving our children behind. We are bringing them with us. In Jesus' name. <laughs>